in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off. So far, we've learned what a z-score is, what it can tell us, how to calculate it, how to know when answers are reasonable, and how to make a calculator to do conversions conveniently in Excel just by changing the mean and the standard deviation based on the problem you're working on. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what we can expect based on a couple of rules that help us to know how things are going to be spread out. The range rule of thumb works for any distribution, so this doesn't have to be normal or bell-shaped. It can be uniform, it can be exponential, it can be any number of different distribution shapes. The empirical rule will work only for normal bell-shaped distributions. So we'll start with the range rule of thumb, which again works for any distribution. And that's that the vast majority, or 95% of values, are expected to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So we expect almost all, the vast majority, 95% of the values to fall within this range. There's your mean in the center, move two standard deviations up, and two standard deviations down, and that's where almost all your data is going to fall. Pretty simple. Now for z-scores, what we can expect for any district, wait a minute, I think that slide must be out of place. The order's a little wonky. This is just another slide illustrating we have the range rule of thumb for any distribution, which is the 95% rule within two standard deviations. We just saw that slide. And now the normal distribution, we can use the empirical rule, which is also sometimes referred to as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So with the empirical rule, when you're working with a bell shape, you have more information. And it plays out like this. There's your range rule of thumb again. Remember we said it works for any distribution, including the normal distribution. So 95% we expect to be within two standard deviations of the mean. That's still current, but we also have, when we know it's bell-shaped, we also expect 68% to fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And 99.7% to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. Now that's almost 100%. So 0.3% we expect to be further away from the mean than three standard deviations. Again, remember, this is only for bell shapes. If it's not a bell shape, you can only use the range rule of thumb. There is another rule called, called Chebyshev's theorem um, that we're not covering in this class. So if you want to look it up, it's also another convenient way to have more in, um, insight on distributions that are not bell-shaped. So normal distributions. We just saw that within one standard deviation, we expect 68% to fall, so we should see an area between those two standard uh, two values, one standard deviation in each direction, and under the curve, this area would be 0.68 to represent 68% of the total curve area. The total area under the curve has to be 1, so 0.68 would be the area in this space. And since the normal distribution is symmetric, just the area on one side would be 34% or 0.34 as a probability. And of course, you would have the other 34% on the other side. 95% rule gives us 0.95 area between two standard deviations of the mean. And if you cut that in half, 47.5. Also, we know 95%, the vast majority, lies within two standard deviations. Then we have this red region in each tail that adds up to a total of 5%. And you can split that up into 
And thinking about that right now is kind of a novelty, but we'll see it come into play later in the course. So within three standard deviations, we see that almost the entire area under the curve is shaded in. Now it's important to realize that while we don't expect many values to ever fall beyond three standard deviations from the mean, there is still space underneath the curve and in theory it never actually touches down on the horizontal axis. It can extend toward infinity and you can always find a little bit more probability under there, although the farther away you get, the closer you get to impossible, never ever completely reaching impossible. All right, so now what do we do with this? Uh, we'll do some examples next, but before we do, I also wanted to point out that you can see that if you have a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, then these values would line up with the z-score scale. So x values are z-scores if you have that property of the mean being zero and the standard deviation being one. We call this standard or standardized. Sometimes you can take a non-standard normal distribution and convert all the x values to z-scores to make it standard. And we'll see an application of that in a future lesson. So if you have a standard normal distribution, your mean is zero and your standard deviation is one. Your x values are z-scores, so you, where we would normally have two separate scales for x values and z-scores, they kind of merge. And in symbols, we would write this as x is normally distributed with a mean and a standard deviation that is known. And if it's standard, that mean would be zero and the standard deviation would be one. So let's do some examples in the next video, working with the empirical rule.